Hi everyone, hope you're well. My next commission is a vase. Now, I was asked to choose the glass vessel, uh, but I was given the subject matter, and the subject matter is flamingos. Are flamingo? Is flamingo? <laughs> Whatever. Okay, so straight away that dictates the shape of the vessel. You're not going to go for something squat, square, um, flat, like a bowl. It's not that shape. It's got to be something tall. And so I've gone for a vase. Um, it is, has got some cutting going on at the bottom, copper wheel engraved cutting, which obviously is not my work. It's done by the manufacturer. It's quite interesting. There are some um, opaque ones and some polished ones. And if you don't know uh, copper wheel engraving, it's engraving. So it's going to look the same um, as, as our engraving to begin with. But you're more familiar with the, the shiny one, you know, um, of cut crystal glasses, whiskey glasses, that sort of thing. And, but it's rather nice to have them mixed together, the polished and the unpolished. Um, anyway, so what I've done is I have got some flamingos from um, the internet, uh, copyright free images. We're just going to use the basic shapes of them, um, get everything into position. I have created the artwork um, uh, size wise, uh, so they're all roughly the same size. And um, I have placed them on the vessel in, um, at the same level, this is important. And then also, um, I have, as you can see, the markings at the top, I have marked um, so that it's uh, equal thirds and you'll never get two um, uh, conflicting with each other, one in front of the other. They'll always be separate. Uh, so it's always best to go for odd numbers when you are doing something like this. And um, that's why I've gone for a third. Right. When I marked off the first one, put it in place, happy with that, and then marked off the others, I was realizing that um, some of them were standing on or too close to or slightly offset the patterns at the bottom, which are obviously not regular, they're quite irregular. But I was moving them, them around, hence the number of markings at the top there, until I was happy that they're all going to be standing in a nice position on uh, just above the cutting. Um, also, what else can I tell you? Yeah, at level, they're all, all their um, feet are in slightly different positions. So I've chosen images that are just um, slightly different and the necks are different. And um, the piece of paper I have, this precious little piece of paper, <laughs> I've had this design for a hundred years. Um, Basically, um, I created a whole lot of circles and a whole lot of markings and you've got front and back, front and back or, or quarters if you were doing something like that. Or you have the various different, um, if, if you there's equal six, um, which means you can pick equal three as well. Um, I've got five going on there, um, that sort of thing. And it's very, very easy. You're just going to put your um, vessel in the middle and mark off the um, exact positions and of course then work out the middle of the image make sure that middle of the image is going down that line these are small things but these are important things it is a difference between an amateur look and a professional look um, I don't like to bring a pattern or um, uh, you know, the images up to the rim at any time, really, unless it's something like trees or something that have to go up that, or designed to go out the top. But um, especially with the vase, if it is going to be used as, as a vase, which it may not be, um, then, um, you know, you want to be able to, to see the images. So if you've got some bits and pieces hanging down a little bit, um, if you've got your image right to the, the top of the glass, the vase, then um, it'll obscure them. But it's just to have them down a little bit. And um, I think I think it'll work quite well. I will be engraving only one of them with you guys. And then at the end, um, you will see all three together. And so, um, as I say, you will be able to see the, the front one facing that way. And at the back, the others will be facing the other way. Um, 
making it quite intriguing and I think it'll be I think it'll be quite a uh, a cute little piece I don't recall doing flamingos before I must have I mean 30 years down 37 years down the line I know I've done um, so many subjects but flamingos can't remember so that'll be really nice to do and I hope you enjoy I certainly will and uh, yeah let's get on with it So first of all, a very, very tiny little diamond and I am very lightly filling in the outlines. Now obviously with the camera view, we are very offset here and therefore you can't really see what I can see because I'm looking straight down over it. I started with the little diamond and now uh, that's because it was very very fine detail now I have got a uh, white or Kansas and I'm at high speed running over uh, the rest of the bird you can see very clearly how offset it is here but you get the general idea Don't you just love this music? It's so romantic. Well, I imagine it goes better with camels, but I just had a feeling. Um, I fancied it for these, the way they're strutting around the vase. And I looked up flamingos in Egypt, and sure enough, there they were. Even in Egyptian art. Right, here I have a scrap glass, and... Um, a diamond and I'm really just checking the size uh, of the diamond always have a scrap piece of glass handy nearby just so that you can check if you need to I was going to work wet now for some reason I decided to work dry I would say because it's just clearer and um, the reason why I was checking the width of this burr was so that it wasn't too large. You just want it the right area. I'm working wet now. <laughs> you just want it the, to fill the right sort of area. You can't, if you go too large and give them fat legs to begin with, you can't really make them thinner. But if you start thinner, you can make them slightly fatter. And you don't necessarily want to be fiddling around with a teeny tiny little burr and, and scribbling it in. Uh, you really need to go for a burr that is going to be near enough the correct size right from the beginning. Well, as I say, at least, you know, if you need to build it up a little bit, um, then you can. These birdies have got very, very skinny legs. So next we're going to put some details on the feathers just to pick them up while we've got the picture behind the glass. And first of all, back to this little scrap piece. And I have got um, what is called a little darling. It's uh, a tiny wheel shaped burr. And um, as you can see, it does a very efficient cut and is quite deep. So you, you've got to be careful you don't press too hard. Um, it's, it's quite aggressive. But I'm wanting to position some interesting strokes that really stand out. Um, as I say, this is not a an actual study of the real-time feathers of the bird. You know, uh, we are creating an impression here. Just 
just roughly picking up what I can see on the image. You know, and later later on you can manipulate that. You will see we manipulate it quite a lot. Uh, but it's just initially to um, mark out the area where the feathers change direction. Uh, they've got really quite an interesting flow. I like it. Now most of these clips are sitting at 150% speed. Therefore, um, you know, obviously I'm not working that fast in real life. So tiny little diamond here, just picking up the main details of its feet. And here I have got a trusty old rat's tail. You see at the back of, of the legs there above the feet are some really tiny little marks. And of course there's the little claws. Claws? They're not claws. I don't know. What are they? <laughs> Nails? <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, you know me. And back to a diamond. This time I'm working on the the little face. Sorry about the lighting. That's pretty poor actually. And I'm at a, a stage now that I can remove the image from behind and clean it up a little bit. Now because I've still got the other images stuck to the other side, I've put in a black cloth so that I can see much clearer what's going on. So I can now fill in the details by just looking at the picture and getting the basic idea. Now I apologize uh, about the bright reflections of the light on this vase. Unfortunately, it... Um, it's done that and I hadn't realized at the time. So what you probably can't see is the fact that I am not keeping it smooth. I'm sort of going heavy handed, light handed and and creating a little bit of texture as I'm working. OK, I've done some pretty hefty outlines there, but it doesn't matter in this case. You know, I don't like outlines as a rule, but um, you won't see them by the time I'm finished. So now I am pointing out to you what I cannot stand and what you need to avoid. And that little uh, diamond, the uh, little darling, <laughs> you can tell I don't like it, of course. Um, and I decided to try and use a white Arkansas to smooth it out, which is normally OK. But in this case, they are pretty rough. Okay, um, the glass itself is not a, a soft crystal, which um, would have helped. But so I've now taken a green stone. Maybe that will be good enough to to smooth it out. But no. <laughs> so big fat diamond it is. As you can see, I had to get quite aggressive. Um, it may have looked like I was going very deep, but I wasn't. I was just uh, smoothing it out as much as I could to get down to the, um, the base of 
the chippy bits, those famous chippy bits that I hate. And they've all gone now, as you can see, which is pretty good. Um, and so I will reintroduce those sort of features later on. Now I'm using the same burr. Um, it is in fact a um, scented diamond burr, which is absolutely fantastic. I've had it, had it forever. Um, that means it's got diamonds all the way through. I'm not going very deep, I'm going relatively shallow, um, for the rest of it anyway. Um, just uh, filling in the gaps really is what you're doing. A little bit of texture going on there um, for its feather pattern. Now I've got an old rat's tail and a stone, green stone, an old one as you can see I've used it a lot for this purpose and I am grinding down the top of the rat's tail to get to the new diamond uh, around the edges and reintroducing some of these uh, feathery features. They're almost hair-like actually. Well, when I say they're almost here, uh, the, what we've got to do to it makes it um, is, the, is the, the actions as though you're doing hair, but the effect in the end will be more like feathers. Here is a really large um, uh, rubber. It's quite hard. You've seen me use it before. It's got a lot of abrasive in it, but it's very effective in, in going over the more surface area so it's not going to go uh, into where I've engraved deeply and so it instantly picks up um, the texture effect. As with painting, there are just many layers, back and forth and back and forth, and light and dark and highlights and shades, and you just you're just building up as you go along. Right, back to a small diamond, and now picking up the more finer, the more finer, the finer details of his little face. There is a distinct um, line, um, well not so much a line, but an area of light and an area of dark. The dark is at the end of the beak. So we're going to make this uh, quite clear the distinction obviously you can't have a completely dark end of the beak otherwise you wouldn't be able to see it at all so here I have got a white Arkansas and just filling in the area slightly already you can see the difference there is also a bit of um, almost like shading if you like. In fact, I've gone quite dark there. I must be, um, I think I know what I'm doing. I must be blending it more. Then I'll probably highlight again the top of the beak. There's a green stone. Now, again, I've got that awful reflection, so I do apologize. Can't really see, but the green stone I am going over the area that is at the moment still clear glass, which is now a half tone instead of completely clear. There is the little small diamond again, and now going over, adding in uh, more refined edges.
deciding to work dry with the diamond and without going deep otherwise you'd end up with ridges everywhere I am neatly filling in the white at the top of the beak and now I have a small brown rubber and just picking up some of the darker areas um, it won't make them very very dark except for the end of the beak which is not too bad because I've only used a white Arkansas with the rest of the face I used the green stone right he has a nice hard rubber disc and instantly you see that eye suddenly appear clever isn't it that is just a magical feeling when you run the hard rubber over the top and it's just going to pick up the upper surfaces and leave any depth behind and um, there the eye appeared so now we're back to um, adding some details into um, the tail feathers and, and the back end of the bird with a rat's tail of course notice I would have I was working dry with the rat's tail um, and likewise I am with this little diamond as well he, this as I say is not lead crystal and so if you do work dry you really do need um, diamonds that are nice and fresh and um, so they make an, a nice sharp cut into the glass which is otherwise relatively hard to work on but this vase is actually um, it's working pretty well I'm quite impressed with, with it. back to the beak and uh, a little brown rubber I think this is a, a slightly harder one there's several different brown rubbers um, and this one's probably slightly harder can't see the colour of it at this stage, but there are various shades of brown. There's a green one, uh, white Arkansas. All of these burrs, if you um, want to purchase them, um, you can purchase them from me. Just drop me an email. White Arkansas here is just um, half toning areas of the legs at the moment. And it's really knobbly knees. <laughs> they are funny looking knees. And um, into the, the top now you can see how um, instantly it makes darker areas. underneath the feathers right here is one of my favorite old rubbers worn out so I am just turning it over so there is a little bit of fresh edge to the top it's not going to last much longer but at least we get some more out of it and we've got a nice sharp edge to um, pick up some shading. I'm swapping and changing as you can see quite a lot back to the white Arkansas. Basically as you know painting with diamonds or painting with the burrs it's um, like having a color palette. I've uh, noticed that uh, around the edges, if you see any little edges that look slightly unfinished, get to them. Here I, I had like a, a stone which I was rubbing this, this um, white Arkansas, this is a different shaped white Arkansas, just to give it a flat top because I wanted a sharp edge to it and um, 
with that, I am creating little half tone um, feathers coming down the neck, which is already textured. Now you may have noticed the rest of the birds are completed. So basically I'm going around the vase and I am fiddling about picking up uh, any details that I need to fix or add to or you know just pottering about making sure that I'm happy with everything. I love this burr for half tone, little feathery, hairy effects. Very clever. They're in instantly dark without even adding a, a rubber. Now here I have got the dark rubber again and running it over the top, picking up the very darkest areas. You don't have to press that hard at all and it will make, uh, it will polish that much, it will be your darkest, darkest shadows. I usually leave it right to the end to use this burr. Touching up with the little diamond. to the hard rubber. And there you have it. The three flamingos. Hope you enjoyed that. Have a go. Thanks for watching guys, take care, bye for now.